My name is Billy Seckham. Uh, I am a, a figurative painter. I live in Metuchen, New Jersey, and uh, my artwork um, is, uh, as a subject, is, is based primarily in um, painting the figure, but also it incorporates uh, fashion, it incorporates um, symbols of empowerment, uh, particularly I think in my paintings a lot of the, the girls that I end up painting uh, in some ways are a self-expression of my own self-empowerment um, and, the, and, and the, the female figure really is more just uh, um, a, a vehicle to, to make a nice picture. Um, but I also try to focus in my paintings uh, building up textures um, in thick impasto paint and uh, having a lot of fun with uh, the, the process of painting. I think it's important to, to, to focus on the academic quality of, of, uh, of color and, and, and of course drawing, but as far as uh, painting is concerned, um, it's really an exploratory process for me. Uh, I've been painting uh, since high school, uh, but I suppose I really started focusing on painting and, and really trying to get uh, better in understanding what I'm doing uh, in college. I went to Syracuse University for illustration. Uh, I thought I wanted to originally be an animator, uh, drawing for Disney, um, and, uh, but uh, among that education we learned how to draw and paint, and so uh, if not be an animator, uh, certainly uh, trying to paint maybe for a magazine, and, and uh, that was the, the common approach back in those days, but uh, since my wife and I have now lived in New Jersey for uh, I guess 12 years, um, that's really where I feel like as a painter I've, I've really blossomed and it has a lot to do with the access uh, to New York City with the galleries and uh, the other artists that are uh, in this area that you can go and, and see uh, whether it's in Chelsea uh, or take classes with at the Art Students League. There's just a lot of wealth and knowledge around here and that's where I feel like um, having painting for so long now, I think that just the resources that New York City has to offer can really take uh, a person that is an entry-level artist and take them from here and, and, and really get pretty advanced. As, as painting influences go, I think as, um, as I've gotten older that those influences have changed. Uh, when I was young, I was uh, starting out again as an illustrator and my influences were people like C.F. Payne and a lot of the, the classic illustrators that you see in magazines. But as uh, I've continued to look at more figurative painters uh, and painters in this area, uh, I've certainly been influenced by people like Nelson Shanks, um, who painted Princess Diana, um, and he was, uh, he was based out of Philadelphia. Um, and I had the opportunity to study with him in terms of thinking about color and, and how to approach the figure. But uh, as I've uh, taken that education and built upon that, uh, the people as of late who I've been influenced by, and, I, and, and for, for the record, as most painters would say, uh, I'm certainly influenced by the likes of John Singer Sargent, Andrew Zorn, and even uh, now, that's that's more uh, portrait based. But uh, even people like Norman Rockwell, again, uh, who really painted academically. More recently, the people that I I really come to admire um, are people like Tim Okum Okamura, who's a, a Brooklyn-based painter, uh, who um, 
does some really expressive uh, work, primarily building up textures using graffiti as backgrounds and so forth. Uh, and his subjects are oftentimes strong African American women. Um, but he's influenced by his background uh, and environment being in Brooklyn. I, I love his stuff uh, as well as, um, as of late, I've really been uh, influenced or I should say at least inspired by uh, Basquiat, uh, um, who, uh, if you're not familiar with him in the, in the early 80s in New York City, really made a mark uh, in the painting world. And uh, I think I, I've come to enjoy his work for the simple fact that um, there's something in, in these painters uh, that is very freeing with their work. Uh, he is, um, you might describe his work more as um, uh, like a Picasso, for example, um, and uh, he used bright colors and was very liberating in, in his, his brush strokes and the content that was in his painting. So um, I think that as I get older, there's there's a want to, to get rid of kind of the, um, uh, maybe the handcuffs that academic painting puts on a person and, and, and pay homage to that and be um, aware of those the academic approaches, but then how do you spin that to make it your own? Uh, such as in, um, I always talk about Jimi Hendrix, uh, for example, on, you know, he, uh, as so many great guitar players, you know, he, he studied guitar, but then uh, in the end found his own voice in, in playing the instrument. And so I, I feel like for a lot of painters, it's the same thing. Uh, I think the biggest piece of advice that I would give myself 20 years ago uh, as, a, as a budding painter um, I think would be to say not give up and I, and I think that for anybody that's had any level of minor or major success I think it's I, I think that success largely comes as a result of not giving up and uh, and and I think it's those small successes that you can string together um, where, you, where you find a little bit of a groundswell and you, you, you find some movement in, in yourself. Um, and, and I think in not giving up, that by itself is success. Um, and, 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 and there have been times when I've, I've hung up my brush, uh, for example, when my son was born, and I, I was questioning why I painted. And I, I, I couldn't answer that question. And so I, I hung up my brush temporarily. And I said, you know, if I'm going to come back to this, I, I want to make sure that what I'm doing is honest. And uh, if at the, the time I'm putting in, it's, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be my own voice and not being so much concerned about what other people think. And so um, though I, I, I gave up temporarily, uh, when I came back, uh, I was much more uh, myself, much more honest, and much more energetic about the, the painting process as a whole. Going forward as a painter, the, where, where I see myself headed, I think, um, uh, is continuing to string together uh, both teaching opportunities as a painter, uh, whether it be uh, within my own studio, uh, which, which I just recently created. It's called uh, Art Factory Studios, and uh, I, I, I teach kids drawing and painting. Uh, but also within that, um, I, I do a, a number of teaching uh, engagements uh, in the city, in New York City, uh, at, the, at a gallery called Dacia Gallery, uh, D-A-C-I-A, Dacia, and that's on the Lower East Side. Uh, and from time to time, I teach a residency program there. Um, that that being said, I, I don't primarily see myself uh, just just teaching. I think the direction I'm headed, the paintings are getting really interesting, um, and, and I think it has a lot to do with, like I said earlier, about um, images that are uh, exploring self empowerment uh, as well as uh, uh, being fashion driven and. Um, exploring uh, paint applications and mark making. So I think the, the paintings will continue to get energetic and uh, be fashion based. Um, and, and with every painting, try to uh, learn something new with, uh, about the process, about myself. And um, I, I continue to see 
that evolving and uh, really just continuing to try to uh, get into different shows, whether it's in New York or across the country or even overseas. Um, but uh, try to connect with, with galleries and like-minded artists and people uh, who have a similar vision. And, uh, and I've found among those circles that uh, a lot of the people in those circles have the same ideas. Uh, and, and, and really within that, trying to support each other. So I'm gonna just continue to push forward with the type of paintings that I like to do. And hopes that I, in, in hopes that I also meet like-minded people along the way, and again, never give up.